Glenn Gould was always an outlier. While he was a native to the Beaches neighborhood, I would assume that, unlike the legendary musician, most members of his community relish the warm days of summer and sunshine. In fact, for well over 100 years, the beaches have been attracting Torontonians to its beaches on warm, sunny days. At the turn of the century, the beaches was a destination, with cottages and amusement parks near the water. But people loved the area so much that many decided to stay, and the vacation destination grew into a thriving community. Today, the beaches is one of the most sought-after neighborhoods in the city, and it's easy to see why. It's beautiful. Queen Street is lined with shops, cafes, and restaurant patios, and there's an obvious pride that beachers have about their community and their homes. The beaches also ranks really well in many other categories, from premium real estate to good schools, safety, and strong community engagement. One area where it ranks low is in diversity, but that's relative to Toronto. But back to why the beaches is one of the most sought after communities. Obviously, the beaches themselves are a big draw, not only for the residents, but for people living in different parts of the city. This stretch of beach is one of the closest for city dwellers, and it can be reached with public transit fairly easily. And the same streetcar line that services the beaches today is the same one that has shuttled Torontonians to the beaches and back for over 100 years. The Queen Street streetcars have a long history and are part of the reason that the beaches grew into what it is today. Not only is it a quiet reprieve from the downtown core, but it's relatively easy to access, and it always has been. I took the 503 Queen Street car while making this video, and it took me about 40 minutes to get back to the financial district. All things considered, that's not too bad. As we explore the beaches neighborhood, I'm going to be starting in the north at the Glen Stewart Ravine, then heading south and east towards R.C. Harris Water Treatment Plant. From there, we'll make our way west and check out the beaches, boardwalks, parks, and Queen Street and everything else. Of course, I can't possibly cover it all, so if I miss something, please let me know in the comments. Hey, I'm Mark. I'm a photographer and videographer based in the Toronto area, and I make videos about North American places and experiences. My goal with every video is to bring you valuable content and give you great great visuals and insights into the places that I explore. I have lots of videos on my channel like this and plenty more that are planned for the weeks and months ahead. So subscribe and join me. And if you've already subbed, I appreciate you and thank you. The Glen Stewart Ravine runs north, south from Kingston Road and down towards Queen Street. As you step off the main artery of Kingston and down the steps to the elevated boardwalk, the street noise quickly dissipates. This is a great way to kick off a tour of the beaches as it sets the tone for the laid back vibe of the neighborhood. At the midway point, there's a set of stairs that lead up to Balsam Avenue, but if you continue along the path, you'll reach Glen Manor Drive. As you resurface at street level, you're introduced to one of the beautiful beaches residential streets. Lined with trees and a mix of modern architecture and turn of the century estates, wandering up and down the hilly streets should be on any sightseeing tour. Not only are these streets historic and beautiful, but many influential people grew up around here. Just around the corner from the Glen Stewart Ravine is the childhood home of Glen Gould. Glenn was a musical phenom and was recognized at an early age as being an incredible piano player. He went on to have a long career as a recording artist and touring around the world. Other notable personalities have called the beaches home as well, including Academy Award winning director Norman Jewison, best known for films such as The Cincinnati Kid, In the Heat of the Night, and Moonstruck. Penny Oleksiak, who is Canada's most decorated Olympian, is also from the beaches. As we make our way east along Queen Street, we come across a beaches landmark, the Goof. The story goes that at some point a long time ago, some of the neon lights stopped working and good food became locally known as the Goof. The name is as interesting as the menu, which is a combination of Chinese food and traditional diner fare. Just across the street from the Goof is the Fox Theater. Built in 1914, it's the oldest continuously running theater in the city. The first movie to ever play was a silent Western film called The Squaw Man by Cecil B. DeMille. Today, the theater plays second-run movies, independent films, and classics. Further east along Queen Street is probably the nicest water treatment plant you've ever seen. Built in 1932 in the Art Deco style, this water treatment plant provides clean water to 30% of the city. Prior to its construction, Toronto had notoriously unclean drinking water and water shortages. But with this new treatment plant, the city would make a statement architecturally, but also to the people of Toronto that things were going to get better. In the late 1800s and before it was a water treatment site, this land was home to Victoria Park, which was one of the beach's amusement parks. 
parks. Visitors used to arrive by ferry, which departed from the same docks used today by the Toronto Island Ferries. The site has also been used in countless TV shows and movies. From here, we're heading west along the beaches and boardwalk. But wait, some people refer to the beaches as the beach, so don't be surprised if you hear both or see either one on signs. Apparently, this is a hotly contested topic and uh, it dates back to the 19th century. We're starting here at Silver Birch Beach, which doubles as an off-leash dog park. A couple hundred meters further down the beach is where the boardwalk starts, and it runs along the waterfront for about two and a half to three kilometers, ending way out at the end of Woodbine Beach. The first place of note along the boardwalk is the Balmy Beach Club. This is a private club that's been around since 1905. Unfortunately, fire burned down the first two clubhouses, and the current one was built in the 1960s. The club originally offered lawn bowling and paddling, but would later offer lots of other sports. Further west along the boardwalk, we reach Ludi Lifeguard Station. For over 100 years, this station has been the home base for the lifeguards that patrol the beaches, and it's estimated that they've saved over 6,000 lives. Toronto Harbour Commission built three of these stations across the city in 1920. Today, this is the only original one left, and it's actually thanks to the residents of the beaches that it's still standing today. In the 1990s, it was falling apart, and residents of the beaches banded together to repair it. There's lots of stories like that in this neighborhood. The beaches residents are are very proud and it shows. Across the boardwalk is Beaches and Cream which offers ice cream and burgers and hot dogs and that kind of thing. Plus they have a great patio overlooking the beach. We're now getting into the Woodbine Beach area and it's a little busier than the east end of the beaches. There's a public pool, restrooms, the Toronto Beach Club and some other food and drink options here. Plus, there's the Woodbine Beach Volleyball Courts. According to their website, Ash Bridges Bay Beach Volleyball League is the largest in North America. Past the volleyball courts is the Woodbine Beach Park. It's a stunning park with biking and walking trails, docks, and views of the Ashbridges Bay Yacht Club and the Toronto skyline. As we head back towards Queen Street, we pass through Woodbine Park, which has trails, ponds, playgrounds, and it's also where the main stage is located for the annual Beaches International Jazz Festival. They even close down Queen Street to traffic, and lots of different acts take the stage up and down the street. At the north end of the park is a new music venue called History. This opened in 2021, and it's a collaboration between Drake and Live Nation. To round out this tour, we're headed back east along Queen Street. Once past Woodbine Avenue, we start to get into the part of the beaches community. Here we pass heritage buildings, beautiful architecture, favorite spots for locals, and what you might consider the central park of the beaches, Kew Gardens. This stunning park is packed with basically everything you need or want from your neighborhood park. There's playgrounds and splash pads for kids, there's courts for pickleball or ball hockey, there's picnic areas, baseball diamonds, bandstands, lawn bowling. On the east side of the park is where you'll find the Q Williams house. This home and the land it sits on was once private property. In 1907, the owners sold it to the city of Toronto. There's also the oldest tree in the park, which is believed to have sprouted somewhere around the year 1800, making it older than Canada itself. As I mentioned at the top of the video, if I missed something that you think people should know about, and I'm certain that I did miss a whole bunch of stuff, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you, and maybe I could include it in a future video one day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the beaches. I'll see you next time.